What you talking about, Willis? Okay, I'll leave that to Arnold. What you talking about, Willis? Man, Saturday nights were spent on Park Avenue with Philip Drummond, his daughter, and two adopted sons. Did you know that the Different Strokes title was adapted for Muhammad Ali's popular saying, Different Strokes for Different Folks. This show tackled racial and economic issues surrounding Americans in the 1980s, many of which are still relevant today. Maybe we should all remember the show's theme. It takes different strokes to move the world. Everybody's got a special kind of story. Everybody finds a way to shine. Alan Thicke, who played Dr. Jason Seaver, the patriarch on Growing Pains, actually wrote and performed this series' memorable theme song. It don't matter that you got, not a lot. If you enjoy this different rewind, please give this video a big thumbs up for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a single nostalgic episode. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and let's hop right in and figure out what happened to the stars of Different Strokes. Conrad Bain. Philip Drummond was the strict but fair, affluent and kind widower who adopted the Jackson boys after their mother, who was his housekeeper, had passed away. Conrad Bain's identical twin brother got drug into the spotlight as well, first appearing in a 1977 episode of Mauled Together. Because besides Mauled and Walter Finley, Conrad's Dr. Arthur Harmon was the most recurring character from this Norman Lear show. I've been practicing, Willis. <laughs> Conrad was a TV pro and found fault with how the newly famous Gary Coleman worked on set, saying, quote, I've been around this industry for years. You don't see me ordering around the crew for food. For more on the challenging lives of child stars, we have a great 1980s child stars video for you to check out next. Directly following different strokes in 87, Bane was part of the short-lived George C. Scott sitcom Mr. President for every episode, but that would about do it for the aging actor. His final TV TV appearance was in the finale of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, where he reprised his drumming alongside Gary Coleman's Arnold when the two were shopping for new homes in L.A. I think he's oversteady a little bit, Arnold. You're probably right, Dad. Let's check out this fly pad. Conrad Bain passed away from a stroke in 2013 at the age of 89, but we won't forget his fatherly kindness and the smiles he brought. Gary Coleman. Arnold Jackson was the adorable and lovable little bro that brought viewers back for more each week, partly with his iconic catchphrase. What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about? 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 He was one of the best TV characters of all time. Hilarious and cute, yet intelligent and witty. Even his serious arcs were awesome. Coleman's first TV appearance was in 1974 with commercials for Harris Bank. He was incredibly endearing. Coleman's talent was noticed and he was offered the role in Different Strokes. At the height of the show, he earned $100,000 per episode. Way better than my job of babysitting my brother for a buck. Unfortunately, Coleman was left with about a quarter of the original amount of money that he made on the show. He later successfully sued his parents and former advisors for misappropriation of his finances. And Gary was awarded $1.3 million. Gary Coleman! Coleman was a huge fan of model trains. He loved to build and maintain miniature railroads. He had tracks in his homes in multiple states in the 90s. One of his collections is still preserved in Colorado Springs. Coleman ran for governor in the 2003 California recall election. He received over 14,000 votes, which put him in eighth place. Gary Coleman's small stature was due to a congenital kidney disease. He received dialysis for many years, even while filming different strokes. Tragically, Coleman passed away from those lifelong medical problems in 2010 at the age of 42. Charlotte Ray. Edna Garrett was the Drummond's first no-nonsense housekeeper, who was lovingly called Mrs. G. Ray began professional acting in 1951, and her first notable role was in 1961 with 11 episodes of Car 54, Where Are You? She appeared in all 24 episodes of the first season of Different Strokes. Uh, are you trying to make me feel rotten? Yes, I am. You're doing a great job. Thank you. There was an episode where she helped out a private school, and this gave Charlotte Ray an idea for a new spin-off, The Facts of Life. NBC loved the pitch and approved the show, and after years of appearing in supporting roles, Ray finally had her moment to shine. For more on Charlotte Ray, check out our in-depth episode about the entire cast at The Facts of Life. 
Todd Bridges. Willis Jackson was popular and rebellious. Well, he had his eyes on the prize. A foxy lady to have by his side. In a case of life imitating art, Todd Bridges dated his Different Strokes girlfriend, Janet Jackson, and also admitted in his autobiography to having a couple of flings with his on-screen sister, Dana Plato. Bridges was born into an acting family. His older brother, Jimmy Bridges, is still working as an actor today. Todd's first professional job was in 1975 with an episode of Barney Miller, and he followed Abe Vigoda to his spinoff show, Fish, where Todd was a series regular for 35 episodes. Coleman may be the cutest child actor ever, but Todd was not far behind him. You may also remember Todd in primo cute mode as the character Solomon from a very memorable episode of Little House on the Prairie. And we talk a little more about this episode in our little known Little House Facts episode, if you wanna watch that one next. More recently in 2007, Bridges had a recurring role as Monk on Everybody Hates Chris. He's also appeared on several celebrity game shows, even beating Vanilla Ice in a boxing match on Celebrity Boxing. He also appeared as a contestant on Hulk Hogan's Celebrity Championship Wrestling. What? What you said? Todd Bridges! Cause Todd is a fighter. He fought drugs too. His drug habit began when he was 15 years old and he started dealing drugs to support his addiction. In 1989, he was arrested and charged with the murder of Kenneth Tex Clay, a Los Angeles area drug dealer. He was later accurately acquitted of the charges. Thankfully, Bridges overcame his drug addiction too in 1993. And today is in his mid fifties and he's still acting in a lot of B and C movies. His most recent appearance was in the 2019 film A Psycho's Path, but we're glad he's still at it. Mary Jo Catlett Pearl Gallagher was the longest tenured housekeeper appearing in 81 episodes. Pearl's actress Mary Jo Catlett began booking TV roles in the mid 70s, highlighted by three episodes of MASH as Nurse Walsh. Her major role simply requires her voice as Mrs. Puff in SpongeBob SquarePants, in addition to loads of spin off movies and specials. What's your secret? A little radio in your head? <laughs> Mary Jo was specifically sought out by creator Steven Hillenburg for the role, which she quickly accepted. Catlett claims to have basically retired in 2013, but along with her Mrs. Puff, she makes guest appearances every once in a while. Today, Mary Jo is 82 years old and continues to live prosperously under the sea. Dana Plato. Kimberly Drummond, the older daughter of the family, was perfectly cast as the pretty older sis and was part of the early success and glue for the show. Plato began appearing in commercials at age seven and began acting on television at 11. She made her film debut at 13, starring alongside Mary Ann herself, AKA Dawn Wells, in the film Return to Boggy Creek. For more on those stranded boaters, check out our Gilligan's Deep Dive 2. Next up was her Kimberly Drummond. Unfortunately, Plato was written out of the series when she became pregnant in 1984. What is it, Dad? Sounds serious. It is. I am very disappointed that you felt you couldn't discuss it with me. And she only returned for guest appearances after the birth of her son. In addition to acting, Dana Plato was a talented figure skater, even training to earn a spot on the Olympic team at one point. Plato attempted to establish herself as a serious actress, but never had much luck. She even got breast implants before appearing in a June 1989 Playboy pictorial. In 1991, Plato entered a video store and robbed the cashier with a pellet gun. She made off with a hundred $164 before the clerk called 911 and said, quote, I've just been robbed by the girl who played Kimberly on different strokes. She was arrested and given five years probation. Plato was one of the first celebrities to appear in a video game in 1992. She played Kelly Med in the horror game Night Trap. Plato struggled with love, poverty, and unemployment in her later years. In 1999, she appeared on the Howard Stern Show, where she discussed her life, drug problems, and arrests. Terribly, that next night, she died of a drug overdose on prescription medication. Some debate still stands whether suicide or accidental overdose. Her final film role was posthumously released in 2002 titled Pacino is Missing. Though the show was canceled after eight seasons, its impact remains as one of the best shows of the 70s and 80s, highlighted by brilliant quick-witted comebacks and great one-liners. I'm saved. Unfortunately, that wasn't nearly enough. I'm unsaved. <laughs> 
Can you remember a better show from the 1980s? Who was your favorite character from Different Strokes? Let us know in the comments below. We read them all. And if you enjoyed our return to Park Avenue, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a throwback video. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.